In the next six lessons, I'm going to look at part two of the IELTS speaking test. In this lesson now, we're going to focus on one topic area, which is describe a person. But we'll come to that later. First, a few quick pieces of information about part two of the speaking test. Part two of the test lasts between three and four minutes. Basically, you have a minute to prepare and you have to speak alone for two minutes. So most people think of this as a presentation or a short talk. You speaking alone and the examiner listening. This is an important part of the test because it's a good opportunity for the examiner to listen to you very carefully and see how good your language is. What happens then? Well, the examiner starts by giving you a task card, a piece of paper or card with a question written on it, a question task. And that task always begins with the word describe. So you're going to have to describe something. Then the examiner also gives you a pencil and a piece of paper for making notes. So you have your task card and you can make some notes. And the examiner will tell you you have one minute to make notes on the task. In that minute, you need to very quickly decide what you're going to talk about. If the question asks you to describe a person who you like, you need to make that decision very quickly. Who, who am I going to talk about? Think the first thing that comes into your head, make that decision, and then make a few notes about that person. Then when the one minute preparation time is finished, the technique is, uh, my advice is, just follow the points on the task card. So if the main task is describe a person who you like, below that it will say, who is this person, how do you know them, um, why do you like them. There'll be some bullet points below the main task. Use those bullet points to help you. You don't have to cover them all, but I recommend that you do because they help your structure. They give you something to say. So you go through saying what you can about those bullet points. Those are the only techniques that I can really suggest for what you should do in the exam. However, before the exam, I can make some good suggestions about how to prepare. Because the good news for IELTS speaking part two is that they tend to repeat the same topics and very similar questions all the time. So for example, I've already mentioned about describe a person, but the, they often have questions about describing a place, an object, etc. There, there are some very common topic areas which I'll talk about later in this lesson and I think you can prepare for them well with good language and good vocabulary. Final thing to say about that, and I will repeat this a bit later in the lesson, but vocabulary ideas and giving a good detailed answer is the key to this part of the test. Don't worry too much about grammar, about linking. Those things you can't really prepare for, and if you try to prepare some good grammar and some good linking phrases, you're not going to answer the actual question. You're going to be so worried about your grammar that you forget to give the answer. So content is much more important than grammar and structure. I'll mention that again later in this lesson. And what I'll do now, as I've told you the techniques, we'll move on to looking at the preparation mainly of topics, vocabulary, ideas. In this part of the lesson we're going to look at topics, techniques, vocabulary and an example question for IELTS speaking part two. Let's start with topics. There are six main topic areas that I think you should prepare for. All IELTS speaking part two questions begin with the word describe. It's a describing task. And here are the six main areas that you might have to describe in your test. Describe a person, a place, an object, an event, an activity, your favourites. So, for example, if the question asks you to describe a teacher, that's in the first main area, describe a person. If the question is, or the task is, to describe a holiday that you went on, that would be under the main topic area of describe a place, etc. So most speaking part two questions fit into one of these six main topic areas. There's one or two that are different, but these are definitely the main areas. 
Some advice next. Prepare ideas and vocabulary for these topic areas. This is the best way to prepare. Don't prepare grammar or linking. If you're trying to just put grammatical structures or memorized linking phrases, if that's what you're preparing to try and put those into your um, two-minute talk, that's not the best way to prepare for this. There's no, it's no good having lots of nice grammar and linking, but no ideas. You should focus on answering the question well. Ideas and vocabulary are the secret to doing well in speaking part two. More advice? Speak naturally and explain in detail. This is the same idea. It's all about ideas, vocabulary, giving detail to your answers. So it's about content, not structure. The examiner's not really listening to your structure here at all, not listening to your linking or how you organize your ideas. It's not so important. If you can just speak naturally and give a really nice detailed description in those two minutes, then you'll get a good score. Now we come to the main part of this lesson, which is to look at the topic area, describe a person, one of our six main topic areas that we need to prepare. And I've seen this question asked in different ways. If you look at the official Cambridge IELTS books or the other official IELTS materials, you'll see variations on this question, such as describe a teacher, a famous person, a friend, family member, child, someone who helps people, or someone who does something well. Those are examples that I've seen of this question asked in different ways. But all of those um, different tasks are really asking you to describe a person, which is our topic area for this lesson. And I think we can prepare ideas that could be used in any of those specific tasks, whether you are asked to describe a teacher, a famous person, or a child. You could use some of the same ideas, and that's what we're going to look at in the rest of this lesson. First, what are the bullet points below the question? What do they ask you to describe about this person? Well, if you just think in terms of the question words, this is what they usually ask. Who, what, where, when, how, why? For example, who is this person? You, they want you to describe who the person is, of course. What he or she does. When, how, or where you met. Or if it's a famous person that you haven't met, how you know about this person. And finally, the last question is always a why question. For example, why you like this person, why you respect this person, why you think this person is important. If we can be ready for those description tasks and the bullet points, then we'll be well prepared for the test. Now I'm going to give you some preparation tips about this topic. First, think of a theme for any of the people that you might have to describe. Remember, friend, family member, famous person, child, etc. We need a theme that could be used to describe any of these people. I'll show you what I mean in a moment. When we have that theme, we're going to think of some easy adjectives, and then we're going to use a dictionary or the internet to search for better words and phrases to improve our description. Remember, these are preparation tips, not tips for in the exam. These are tips for you preparing at home, preparing for this topic. Let me show you what I mean by the theme now. Imagine we describe any of these people, friend, family member, famous person, child, teacher, etc. We can describe any of them as hardworking. So hardworking can be our theme for any of these descriptions. Then we can think of adjectives related to that, such as busy, active, but then with a bit of work, we can find better words and phrases. One example of a better word, conscientious, and a nice phrase, someone you can count on. Now, these are not synonyms of hardworking. They're related adjectives and phrases. So you're not just looking for a list of synonyms. You're looking to create a description based on the theme of this person being hardworking. Let me show you what I've done with this theme. 
a hard-working person could be someone who is enthusiastic, energetic, studious, persistent, motivated, determined to succeed, someone who sees things through, which means they always finish things, a good team player, and someone who likes to challenge himself or herself. So I've got some good vocabulary building around this theme of the person being hardworking. One more example, if I take the word friendly, the theme of this person being friendly, we could have these words, kind, caring, generous, unselfish, big-hearted, supportive, down-to-earth, easygoing, always there when you need him or her, someone who cheers me up, a big or magnetic personality, someone who lights up the room. And notice here I'm starting to use some less common vocabulary, some good vocabulary that most people in their exam would not use. Now once we've developed these themes, there's one final step in preparation that I think is really useful, which is to think of examples or stories to demonstrate each theme. If the theme is, my brother is hard working, we could demonstrate that with an example. I remember when he used to get up at 5 a.m. to do some extra work before school. And I could keep talking about that example, make it into a longer story if necessary, if I've got time. If we look back at the list of people that we might be asked to describe in the test, we now have some good themes that we could use for all of these people. And maybe you've also thought of some examples or stories that you could use to support those themes. Don't worry if you haven't thought of the examples. I think even if you've just prepared the themes and some good adjectives, good vocabulary, that's a good start. You'll be well prepared and you can be confident going into the exam. Hopefully you'll be able to think quickly in the exam and think of examples to support those themes even if you haven't prepared them. But if you have more time at home, you could prepare an example or story for each of those people on the list to support the themes. But remember that you can't prepare for everything. You will need to adapt your ideas and improvise in the test. I'm just suggesting that before the test, you do your best to prepare some theme language, some good language for the main topic areas. And then all you can really do is practice, lots of practice using tests and record yourself. Record yourself speaking for two minutes, trying to give an answer, trying to use some of your prepared theme language. But then when you've recorded yourself, use that recording, write it down and see what you can do to improve it. Could it have been better? Did you include all of the language that you prepared, your theme language? If you didn't, look at the areas that were weak and re-record yourself. Practice again. Keep going and you'll get better and better the more you do. And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to do a real example question from one of the official Cambridge IELTS books. Here's the question that I'm going to try. Describe someone you know who does something well. You should say who this person is, how you know this person, what they do well, and explain why you think this person is so good at doing this. You've seen what I recommend now. You know the techniques that I recommend. First, the preparation of this topic. I've got a couple of good themes and some good vocabulary that I'll try to include. I will try to improvise and invent some examples to support those um, themes. And also the technique that I mentioned earlier in the lesson, I'm going to go step by step through the points on this task card, using them to help me structure what I say. And hopefully I'll be able to speak for two minutes, get through all the points and use some of my good prepared language. Here we go. I'll start the two minutes now. I'm going to describe a friend of mine called James. James is an actor by profession. Um, he's in his 30s, I think. He's tall. He's about my height with dark hair and a friendly face. He's always smiling and he cheers me up whenever I see him. Um, I met James in uh, at university. He was my 
next door neighbour in my hall of residence in the first year of university. So on that first day when we were moving into our rooms, James introduced himself to me and we struck up a conversation and got to know each other then we became good friends. James, as I said, is um, an actor and I think he's, he's really good at that. He studied drama at university and where I met him and since then he's been working in theatre, he's done some small independent films and he's trying to get his break in television or in uh, more popular mainstream films. And I think he'll do it because for me, he seems a, a, when I've been to see him in theatre productions or I've seen the short films that he's been in, he seems to be a really good actor to me. Um, why I think he's good? Well, I think it comes from his um, work ethic. He's a really hard worker. He's really persistent. He always said he wanted to be a successful actor. It's not a diff It's not an easy profession to become successful in. Um, but he's persisted, he's really intense, he studies each role very carefully, he gets into character. Uh, I remember, for example, not being able to talk to him uh, for about a week before one of his uh, acting jobs because he was in character, he didn't want to lose focus. So he's really intense and that's what I think makes him uh, a great actor and why I think he'll be successful. That was the end of the two minutes, so I had to stop. I had more ideas. I could have said more about the hard work personality. I could have talked about him being friendly and used some of my prepared themes. But you can see it's difficult. I was improvising. I was saying whatever came into my head, following the bullet points on the task card and doing my best to get some, at least some of that prepared language in there. I'll now write up what I said there and I'll include it attached on the document next to this video so I can analyze what I wrote, I'll underline the good vocabulary that I did use and you can have a look, have a read through and see the good words and phrases that I used in there and maybe also think about what I could have added to make that description even better. To summarise then, in this lesson you've seen that I've given some very simple suggestions about exam technique quick decision in the preparation time, follow the points on the task card in the, um, the two minutes when you have to speak and just try to say as much as you can about each one. But I've also given you a lot of advice about what you can do at home preparing before the exam. Topics, vocabulary, ideas, themes uh, and building around a theme, thinking of good examples. These will help you when you go in and you've seen me give a full answer spontaneously, uh, improvising an answer, trying to use some of the good vocabulary from the describe a person theme. And next to this lesson, you can see the script of that description attached on the worksheet.